Hey, learn audio engineering. In this video, you're gonna learn about the top five microphones for home studio recording and podcasting. These are five microphones that are designed for recording speech. And they'll get you started if you're getting into podcasting or streaming or voice acting or recording audio in any shape or form. I mean, there's never been a better time to start that ASMR channel, am I right? So we're gonna start out with the cheapest available options and then work our way up to premium broadcasting options. Some of these I own, some of these I'm a huge fan of, which brings us to the first microphone on this list, a USB microphone like the Blue Yeti or the Blue Snowball. So the Blue Yeti is gonna run you around $170 and the Snowball is a cheaper option at around $50. And the USB microphone is a great choice because it's a microphone and an audio interface in one package. So the first thing you need to do, if you didn't already know, is you need to get your voice into the computer somehow. And we're gonna do that with a microphone and that microphone is then going to send that signal to an audio interface, which is going to send that signal into your computer. And a USB microphone is great because it actually has both of these features in one package. So for streamers or YouTubers or podcasters, or you know, if you wanna get into ASMR, this is a great solution because it's a quick plug and play application. I use this USB mic for online Zoom lessons. It's the best that I can do for a comparison to the blue microphones. But yeah, this is the audio from a USB microphone. This is the Fifine K670. I did a comparison um, using it on my channel a, a while back, um, putting it up against one of the other microphones on this list and uh, the U87, so you can check that out if you like. Yes, I know I forgot to turn off the filter on the U87. Uh, thank you for letting me know. It also has this desktop mount, which looks really sleek for podcasts or anything like that. If you do wanna have a video component, it just it's a really nice kind of setup and you can use that stand for other microphones as well, which I'm going to do. So that brings us to the second microphone on this list, the SM58 or the SM57. So this microphone will require an audio interface and it's the most widely used vocal microphone. It only costs a hundred dollars. You're gonna see it in conferences and concerts, comedians use it. Everyone uses this mic. You've got it laying around somewhere. Hey, like, like right here. Check, 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 check. So it is a very cheap mic that you will never grow out of. Every studio in the world has like a drawer full of these. It's always going to serve you well. You can use it handheld. You can put it on a stand with a clip and it's just all around a great mic. The SM57 is an instrument mic, but it's basically the same thing as this SM58, which has a grill that's meant for vocals. That's really the only difference of these two. In fact, if you take off the wind covering, it actually looks exactly like an SM57. Pretty cool. So you can't go wrong there. Okay, so the third microphone on this list has a little bit of a jump up in price. This is an actual broadcasting microphone. We're talking, of course, about the RE320 or the RE20. The first one there is gonna cost you around $200 and the RE20 version is gonna cost you $300. This is a broadcast standard that's used in a lot of radio stations. I know they use it at CBC, CKUA. It's really great because it doesn't have a proximity effect. So even if I get really close up to it, it's gonna give a nice full sound, but it's not going to be as boomy and as low end heavy as it would with the 58. So it's widely used on podcasts. You've definitely seen a mic like this before. It's a very full, nice DJ radio sound that's also used by professional singers like Tom York. So the RE320 is the cheaper version. It has a bit of a higher output and it's a little bit brighter when compared to the RE20, but overall it's a huge value. It's very comparable sound. And the big feature again is that variable D, no proximity electro voice kind of technology that they've got, which gives you a full sound without an exaggeration of the bass. Okay, so microphone number four on this list, the S. SM7B. This is the most expensive microphone on the list. It retails for about $379. This is again a broadcast standard that's used in radio studios as well as famously used by artists like Michael Jackson, Metallica, John Mayer, Jack White. This microphone can handle everything from speaking and rapping to loud singing and screaming and everything in between. It's a very reliable microphone but there is one caveat. It's very power hungry so the average interface that puts out around 50 to 55 decibels of gain will not meet the, I think it's 60 or 65 that's required for this microphone. So it's often paired with a cloud lifter. And that's because many home studio interfaces will struggle to give this microphone the amplification that it needs, which is why it's very common to see this mic paired with a 
a cloud lifter. Cloud lifter is essentially a mic preamp with a set amount of gain that is inserted between the mic and another mic preamp to add an additional 25 decibels of gain if you're using a mic with a low output or you have a noisy mic preamp uh, on your interface. This is necessary to really do your voice justice and to give your DAW a healthy signal. So a bit more of an expensive option, but if you do go for the SM7, you will not be disappointed. Okay, so the fifth microphone on this list is the Rode NT1A. This is the first condenser microphone that we've talked about, and this one is gonna require 48 volts of phantom power, so you're gonna have to flick that switch on your interface. And this one is special because as a condenser, it has an extended range, it's very hi-fi, and it has a lot more detail, especially in the top end, which means that it's gonna be more sensitive to the sound pressure level and ambient noise within the room. So the environment is really important. It's really important that you use a pop filter to protect against those plosives. But overall, this is gonna give you the widest range of applications. It's just a fantastic mic to have for your home studio. Okay, bonus mic because I love to over deliver for you guys, the Rode Lavalier mic. This is a microphone that I use in most of my videos because it's a great hidden mic for video. I plug it right in to my iPhone and then airdrop that to my computer where I put it into Logic to process it. So there you go, there are six options for recording the audio for your podcast, stream, or whatever audio related project that you have going on. And if you wanna learn more microphone tips, you can check out my book, How to Record Anything with Clarity and Character. Link to that is in the description. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You give in, you give out. God, what we were talking about